welcome to Kemp Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman, and in this video, I'd like to discuss the mole, Avogadro's number, and how exactly you convert between the two. So let's learn a little chemistry. First and foremost, the mole is a very special unit in chemistry because it allows us to measure the amount of a substance. Keeping in mind, in a chem lab, we're working with, analyzing, measuring substances that are made up of atoms or molecules, particles that can't even be seen by the human eye. So the mole allows us to measure large quantities of these teeny tiny entities. Avogadro's number is going to allow us to relate the mole to a count. For example, one mole of anything, anything you want to measure, is going to equal 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those anythings. So if I have one mole of chemistry textbooks, then I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chemistry textbooks and a whole lot of chem to study. If I have one mole of dollar bills, then I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd dollar bills, and wouldn't that be lovely? If I had one mole of sand, I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd individual grains of sand, and could build a limitless amount of sand castles. In chemistry, we use Avogadro's number to count, let's say, atoms. So if we have one mole of atoms, then we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If we have one mole of molecules, then we'll have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And another real popular one is formula units. So if we have one mole of those, then we'll have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. So let's see how this is applied to problems. In problem number one, they ask how many atoms are present in 5.28 moles of sodium? The most common mistake I see when students are working with this type of problem, they always just wanna guess. Well, do I multiply? Do I divide by Avogadro's number? And a lot of times, they guess wrong. So let's fix that. The way I teach this is I always tell students to pick out a given. The given is going to be a number and a unit that they give you to start with. So the 5.28 moles is going to be our given. And since we want to start with it, we're going to take that number and unit and write it to the left side of our paper. So 5.28 moles of sodium. Once we know where we're starting, then we gotta know where we're going. So we have to figure out what it is we're looking for. So we gotta find the want. The want is gonna be just a unit because you have to calculate the number. So in this particular problem, the want is how many atoms of sodium. So in case I get lost, I'm gonna write atoms of Na to the right side of my paper. So I can always take a look at where I'm supposed to be heading. Now we're going to apply a concept called dimensional analysis here. So we're going to need a ratio. So I'm going to put a multiplication sign and then a fraction. And I'm going to focus on just the units for a minute here. Because if I can set up my units, then I know where to plug in numbers. So I have moles and I need to get rid of that unit. So I'm going to take mole, I'm going to place it to the bottom of my ratio. And then I got to figure out what goes on top. Well, since Avogadro's number relates one mole of an atom to the number of atoms, I can go from moles of a substance to atoms of that same substance. So I'm going to put the unit atom up top. Now, once I know I've canceled the unit I want to get to, and I've got the unit I need to get to at the top of that ratio, now I know I can use those units to plug in some numbers. 
So, according to Avogadro's number, for every one mole of atoms, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. What that means is, I'm going to put the one with the mole unit on the bottom of my ratio. And I'm going to put the number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, at the top of that ratio with the atoms. Which means, I'm going to take in my calculator, or I'm going to plug into my calculator, 5.28 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And the calculator tells me that I've got 3.179 times 10 to the 24th. However, this is chemistry and you are performing a calculation, so you should always be concerned with sig figs. Good news is Avogadro's number is considered a conversion factor, so it's considered to have infinite number of sig figs. So you don't have to worry about the ratio here, you just have to worry about the measurement or the given given to you in the problem. So this particular given, since it's all non-zero digits, has three sig figs involved, which means then I can have three sig figs in my answer. So I'm going to report the, my final answer as 3.18 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. Let's work on number two. Number two asks, what amount of moles represents 2.25 times 10 to the 24th formula units of calcium iodide, CaI2? So. Once again, we're going to start off with that given, the number and the unit. So I'm going to take 2.25 times 10 to the 24th formula units. I'm going to abbreviate that F-U-N for fun, 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 fun. And once I've got my given written down, I'm going to figure out what I want to get to. This time they are asking us to calculate the amount of moles, so I'm going to put mole of CaI2 to the left side of my paper. I'm going to set up my ratio and once again I'm going to focus in on my units. I need to get rid of those formula units that are in the given so I'm going to bring formula unit to the bottom of my ratio. Now once again, since I know Avogadro's number is in play here, I can relate the formula units of the CaI2 directly to the moles. Now once again, for every one mole of CaI2, I can have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of CaI2. So this time the one is going to go with the mole, which is on top, and the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is going to go with the formula units on the bottom. Since now that big number is on the bottom, I'm going to divide by it. So into the calculator, I'm going to plug 2.25 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. which gives me 3.736. Once again, I'm going to check sig figs. I've got three sig figs in my given, so I can have three sig figs in my answer. So the final answer here is 3.74 moles of CaI2. Let's do one more. In the third and final problem here, they ask you to calculate the number of molecules present in 0.27 moles of CO2. So we're going to pull that unit out, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, the given out, which is the number and the unit. So we're going to pull out the 0.27 mole of CO2. And this time they ask us to work our way over to molecules, so I'm going to put that to the right side of the paper. Once again, molecule can't really be abbreviated all that much, but I'm going to use M-O-L-E-C.
and put the CO2 there. I'm gonna set up my ratio, and again, I'm gonna focus in on canceling the unit that's in my given. So I've gotta get rid of moles, so I'm gonna put mole of CO2 to the bottom. Once again, through Avogadro's number, I can relate the moles of something to molecules of that same substance, so I can put molecule up top. And then once again, I know for every one mole, so I'm gonna put one on the bottom of this ratio because that's where mole is, I can have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those molecules. So the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd will be on top. Since it's on top in my calculator, I'm gonna plug in 0.27 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And the calculator gives me an answer of 1.625 times 10 to the 23rd. Just gotta worry about sig figs one last time. Here, we've got a leading zero, so we're gonna ignore that. Just the two and the seven are significant, so I can only have two sig figs in my answer. So I've got 1.6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. I hope this helps you with your chemistry problems. Continue to follow along for more chem content. Take care.